what would be your theme song? Say you were walking down the street and the song just started to play out of random. What would it be? I'm going to say, I feel like it has to change depending on my mood. But if I'm just like walking and I'm feeling like, like I'm up to like hot girl stuff that day <laughs> and I'm just like chilling, feeling confident, it would be um, Heads Will Roll by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Oh, God, I wish we could play that, like a little clip of each song right there. <laughs> but it's basically like, off with your head, dance till you're dead, heads will roll on the floor. Some good stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. What about you guys? Mine would be um, Ain't No Mountain High. Mm. Dang. That's, That's powerful. A jam. Remember the yeah. Titans. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. like it. <laughs> Great movie. Oh, I say I'm definitely picturing us all walking down the street with all these going. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that your song, Nicole? I don't know. It's just a feel good pump up song. And, you know, like I said, it's a jam. So it just gets me in a good mood. She's on and her if way. If I'm walking down the street, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know, just bobbing my head up and down, <laughs> walking down the street. You're on your way to Bed Bath and Beyond. That's not where you work. I work at Bath and Body. I'd probably be on my way to Dunkin' Donuts. She's on her way to Dunkin', just like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Going to grab my coffee. (laughs) What about you, Monte? It'll probably be Drake nonstop. Okay. Yes. And then um, I think my other song would probably have to be Drake Popstar. Yeah, I definitely would go with those two. Uh, That's a good one. Yeah. After, you know, watching a certain show, we'll probably, we'll get into you know, I, I'm feeling like a I'm feeling like a badass at this point, so yeah. I definitely would have to rock with it. So yeah. ready for some high kicks. Yeah. I definitely have um like my cry in the corner in the fetal position song. Um <laughs> I have my getting ready for the club with my girl song. Um chilling with my dog on the couch song. So multiple theme songs for multiple moments. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, different strokes for different folks. You know exactly. <laughs> Recorded in Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Pop Culture Junkie Podcast. Welcome back to the Pop Culture Junkie Podcast and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. We got through 2020. We're all here. We're all doing well. I'm Nicole. I'm Shauna. And I'm Monte. And we actually have a very special guest with us today. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Haley. Hi, everybody. I host a podcast called 30 Nerdy and Thriving, and I'm super excited to join you guys today. It's always good to be with my my fellow pop culture uh, <laughs> fans and geeks. So thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks for coming on. Thank We're very you. excited to Thank have you. you. Thank you. I'm so excited to have another nerdy lady in her 30s <laughs> on the show. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And every time I see the name of your podcast, I think of um, 13 going on 30 when she's in the closet and she's 30, flirty, it's arriving. Yes, that is exactly where it came from. I figure I am definitely not flirty. I'm locked down, married, got some kids, Uh, but I am absolutely nerdy. So that was kind of my my mantra going into my 30s was I'm 30, nerdy and thriving. I love it. uh, Yeah. So that's awesome that you uh, got the reference. Makes me feel good. I I will be your chick for understanding lots of references. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what would your uh, theme song be if you were entering a room, Haley? You know, this required zero thought. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Brightside by The Killers coming yes. out of my cage. I've been doing just fine. Like, there's this uh, scene in The Holiday with Cameron Diaz where she pops the, the CD in and has a dance party by herself in her living room. And I was like... That's me. That is it. my whole life right there in a, in a scene. So, yeah, that would be my theme song. Living room dance parties. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what's everyone been up to for the past two weeks or so? It's been a while since we all last saw each other and obviously our first time seeing you, Haley. So we like to just kind of catch up with each other and see what everyone's been watching. So what's the jam, guys? The Bachelorette ended, so that's a little sad because I have nothing to watch now. But, yeah, I've been working a lot, so I would say, like, work and just catching up on my 
shows I've recorded, like The Bachelorette. Who did she choose in The Bachelorette? <sighs> she chose Zach. <laughs> Not we don't who like I Zach. Of um, all. I don't really, but that's okay. As long as she likes him. Um, I'm, uh, should I say it? Should I say it? I'm going to say it. I don't see them lasting more than two years. Dang. Wait, who did you think she was going to pick? I wanted her to pick Ivan or Ben. I, I did like Ivan. He was pretty good. I love Ivan. But I she sent him dope. home for religious reasons. And it's mm-hmm. like, he's your top three and you didn't talk about this type of stuff. Okay. Does he not like want to do it till marriage or something? The, I don't know. They didn't really go into detail. She was just like, our religious views are just different. So I'm going to have to send you home. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, this is like totally out of the blue. I thought we were cool. But yeah. She chose Zach and now she's living in New York with Zach. Is Zach cute? That's no. what matters, right? I don't think he's cute. How many seasons of The Bachelorette have there been? Like a thousand? Oh, God. Yeah. I think there's like, I don't know what the, off the top of my head, but I want to say like around 17 seasons. Jeez. Every time I see a commercial, because I just saw the commercial for the new season of The Bachelorette, and I was like, or The Bachelor. Yeah, the new mm. season of The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. Every time I see a commercial, I'm like, that's still on. I had no right. idea. <laughs> I had no idea. Yes. Okay. It's because of people like me who actually sit down and watch it. <laughs> I'm looking. Zach Clark, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, he, I, he I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't the best looking guy on the show. We'll just say that. I wouldn't like kick him out of bed for eating crackers. Maybe I would. You know what? No. He ate crackers in my bed. He's gone. He's out. I'm looking at him more. <laughs> Not but, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. never seen an episode either, Haley. But I, I get all my updates and I read up on it so I can uh, provide important commentary. Like, is he cute? <laughs> and our, our boy Monte might actually be on The Bachelorette next season. Or not Ooh. next season, but season after next season. Right, Monte? Uh, yeah, season after next. Uh, yeah, we're still taking that in consideration. So uh, I still keep in contact with him. So we'll... We'll see what happens. Since it's 2021, hopefully, you know, things are somewhat back to normal, you know, with this COVID thing and the bubble and all that. So we'll see how everything turns out. So, yeah, yeah. I'm really trying to be the bachelor, honestly. I'm really just not trying to, like, be on the roster of competing. I need to be, like, I need to make the decisions, honestly. You need the girls after you. Okay. No, no, no. We ain't saying, no, no, we're not even going to say all that because that makes it sound a little arrogant. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that's not what this is about. So, yeah, I just de- like me, like competing like that front line. There's just never been my style. So, but, you know, that could be your way in, though. You can go on The Bachelorette, be the nice guy that doesn't get picked. And then you end up getting your own season of The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. Isn't that how that works? Exactly. Honestly, yes, that's that's how it works. So it's like, ah, I got to take baby steps. Just get in there and say one memorable line that turns into a meme. You're in. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to be the guy to get on there to start the drama. So, <laughs> but we'll we'll see for sure. What have you been watching the last couple of weeks, Monte? There's one movie, Pixar movie in particular. I definitely want to see. It's called Soul with Jamie Foxx. Uh, definitely a really good movie. I've been hearing a lot of great things about it. Uh, we'll definitely talk a little bit about it. I know, Haley, you mentioned that you have seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. It came out on Christmas Day, so that, that we uh, watched it as a family. And it's the same, like you said, it's Pixar, and it's the same creator, um, writer behind Up and mm-hmm. Inside Aww. Out. Yeah. So, and, and like, if anyone has seen Inside Out, it's really like, uh, it's all kind of, philosophical like existential right emotional yeah right so soul you can definitely tell it was made by the same guy because it deals with the concept of the afterlife but not in a traditional way at all whatsoever there's no like heaven hell whatever Mm -hmm. um it's all about you know what happens to your soul and and kind of concept of reincarnation and all this um so i don't know i i know a lot of people who absolutely loved it I think I went into it expecting like kind of a fun Disney movie. And instead I got punched in the face with like some existential midlife crisis movie. And (laughs) I was like, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, And I don't think my kids understood anything that was happening. The whole movie (laughs) Uh, did not stop them from enjoying it, though. They call it the um, 
angel person movie. Oh. So <laughs> then they spent the whole time going, angel, person, angel, person, angel, <laughs> trying to guess which one it was. But anyway, so, yeah, I know a lot of people love it, and I've got a good friend of mine who, who swears by it and says it's his favorite, not just favorite Disney movie, but favorite movie of all time. Oh, so. geez. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a bold claim. See, I gotta right. check, now I got to check it out. Haley wasn't ready for the out. feels trip. I'm Okay, I'm now not, yeah. I'm going to have to go in prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Expect like some big time life lesson uh, from that movie. Yeah, nice. I could Sweet. use some of those. Sweet. I could use yeah. some of those starting twenty twenty one. But I did. I I also I don't know if any of you guys saw Wonder Woman eighty four. Yes, um, <sighs> I saw that too. We watched it on HBO, and then I took my daughter to the theater to go see it too because she wanted to get in full Wonder Woman cosplay and oh, go to the theater. I love it. And go see it. So that's what we did. So I've actually seen that a couple times. And I know that has received quite mixed reviews and mixed responses. But for me, like the the pure, like unadulterated fun movie that I wanted on Christmas, yes. that's what I got from Wonder Woman 1984. So I actually I, I liked it. But, you know, I completely I'm, I'm, agree. Yeah, I, I'm not you know, I'm I'm kind of the type of person where I'm still carrying the torch for like the old Fantastic Four movies, you know, like yes. the campy like ones with uh, Jessica Alba. Like I, 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 I'll defend those till like I'm blue in the face. So <laughs> when people were like, oh, Wonder Woman 84 was cheesy and the special effects and this, that and the other thing, I was like, you're watching a movie about a, you know, woman who can fly with a golden lasso. I mean, like, I don't know what you want from right. a superhero movie that 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 didn't have. So I, I, I liked really liked that it, it. Had some camp in it, like the whole opening or not like the opening scene, but when they actually go to the mall and she's stopping the bad guys, so campy, and I loved it. I'm like, this is kind of like the Superman movies from the 80s, and like spoilers for Wonder Woman 84, but like it has so many like she has an invisible jet at some mm-hmm. point. I just I don't know. I agree. I thought it was just total fun and entertaining. And I love Pedro Pascal so much. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I do, too. Oh, my uh, God. I love yeah. him. <laughs> you can do no wrong. Right. We, <laughs> we watched, speaking of that, we watched um, uh, the We Can Be Heroes movie on Netflix, which is like the oh, unofficial yeah. sequel to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Yes. Um, and... Uh, and I, I only watched it because I had Pedro Pascal in it. So I was like, hey, kids, you guys want to see this? Let's this watch this thing together. This is a children's movie. <laughs> um, but, you know, and he was the highlight in that, obviously. Uh, but, but yeah, he's had quite the year. And so have I, consequently, because I've got to consume all of his content. God bless yes. Pedro Pascal. <laughs> and that mustache. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. My, let's see here, two weeks. Okay, so I binged all of Queen's Gambit, which was really good. I thought it was going to be boring. I don't know why. Everyone told me how good it was. And I was like, yeah, it's just about chess. I don't even know how to play chess. And I really liked it. Watched Wonder Woman 1984. Um, I'm not, I don't remember if I wa- mentioned this in the last podcast, but I watched um, a movie called Black Christmas from the 70s. And it was like a slasher movie. And apparently it was one of the first slasher flicks. And it's a, a, you know, serial killer goes and murders sorority girls at their sorority house on Christmas Eve. And yeah, definitely got me in the Christmas spirit there. Little (laughs) murder. Little murder. Trying to switch it up a little bit. Is that uh, normally what you do every year? Switching to the horror side? Uh, I mean, I guess... We try to watch I, a lot of just like standard Christmas movies and things, mm-hmm. but eventually you see the same ones so many times. True. Uh, and I want to watch more like 70s and 80s slasher flicks. So mm. that was my entry into <laughs> slasher flicks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I watched the Mandalorian uh, season finale. Oh, my God. Haley, did you watch the Mandalorian? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I cried. I mm. I bawled like a baby, and I, I had to because we're we're all in Arizona, right? So it didn't come out until yes. one a.m. Yeah. So I stayed up so that I could watch it. So here I am sitting on my couch at you know whatever one forty five in the morning, <laughs> sobbing like an <laughs> idiot. Uh, but it was totally worth it. I oh my gosh, yeah. I agree. Okay, Mandalorian spoilers, even though it came out like a couple weeks ago. And three, two, one. Uh, I 
thought they did a good job with the Luke CGI. Like, I don't know. I, I've talked about the difference between like, uh, the Marvel CGI when they de-age characters and then how Star Wars seemed to be kind of behind on it when they de-age characters. But I thought the Luke one looked pretty good. Yeah, I thought it looked pretty good. I mean, you could definitely tell that it was CGI and it yeah. looked kind of similar to like a video game. But um, but I also understand why they did it. I know a lot of people were like, why didn't they bring in Sebastian Stan or yeah. why didn't they try to recast it? But the thing is, especially in that moment, it needed to be absolutely clear that that was Luke Skywalker yeah, and for not sure. someone else who could vaguely look like Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. It and had so to be I Mark thought, Hamill in some way. Yeah. Right. Like they didn't have a choice other than other than to use CGI. So I thought it I thought it was really well done. I loved mm-hmm. The the hallway sequence mirroring yes. um, Darth Vader's hallway sequence in Rogue One. Um, yeah, I mean, Din removing his helmet to say goodbye to Grogu. I'm oh like a puddle. Oh my god, I know. Uh, <laughs> Anytime he takes off his helmet, I get chills. It's like, oh, oh it's his man. face. It's his face. I'm so startled. It's Pedro Pascal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's um, still here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I loved it. And then we started watching. Immediately after that, um, Christmas Day, the Disney gallery, like the behind the scenes of Mandalorian season two came out. So we've been watching that, too. And that's been really cool to see how they do so yeah. much of the show, because I just I don't know. I always take that kind of stuff for granted. And I'm also pretty technologically illiterate. Like, I'm still amazed by VHS tapes. So when I see <laughs> how they're doing all that, I'm like, dang, that's really yes. cool. So I love that's been that. Fun to watch. I remember watching that with Game of Thrones. Um after the finale aired and it was like a behind the scenes of how they made everything and just being like that they don't give enough credit to like the people who actually put together this stuff and the sets and everything it's just ridiculous yeah, yeah there's uh, actually three separate actors who play the mandalorian really um, oh, which is pretty that. cool yeah they've got so brendan wayne who's john wayne's son um he's the he does all the gunslinging so anytime mando's in a in a gunfight he's doing that and then um and i can't remember the other guy's name but they've got a a, a, another double who does all of the hand-to-hand combat Mm -hmm. so he's like a trained martial artist so he does all of that and then um pedro pascal comes in to do uh the the lines and the the actual acting although he does a lot of voiceover too so yeah the emotional scenes yeah, I'm like, Even man, those other two guys, his. they just get to go throughout their whole life, like, knowing that they're also the Mandalorian, but they get to go to a grocery store, you know, and not get stopped. So you just think of, that in their head. I'm yeah. Mandalorian. If they don't even you guys know. knew. They don't even know I'm the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> you would be giving me a discount on this Taco Bell if you knew <laughs> that I was the Mandalorian. <laughs> Well, we watched Cobra Kai, and I know you were watching it too, Haley. Strike first. Strike hard. <laughs> no, no mercy. mercy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was everyone's favorite part? Okay, I do have a favorite line. And the minute it was spoken, I put down a note in my phone. <laughs> and it was Amanda LaRusso. And it's in season two <laughs> when they're at the Mexican food restaurant. Oh, my God. And the... um. Uh, Carmen and Amanda are just kind of like, what the hell is going mm-hmm. on? And Amanda goes, they have war in karate dojos. I'll take the Cadillac margarita. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh She's just so over it at this point. Mm-hmm. Oh, they have war in karate dojos. Give me the Cadillac. <laughs> she knew what type her. of night it was going to be. Definitely. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh for me, I think it would have to be season one when he was pretty much getting started, you know, talking to the kids. And it was the one little nerdy kid with the glasses because he was all making fun of each one of them. And he was like, gosh, I feel like a virgin just looking at you. When Johnny then, was first getting started. Yeah. And like yeah. it was a little nerdy kid. And it was it was pretty it was pretty hilarious. But um, I have for me, I have multiples just the Mm -hmm. the big the big brawl in high school with uh miguel and um robbie of course um so yeah man i could go all day with that but i'm gonna just keep it short so Mm -hmm. dude his little one-liners to the kids are so sad (laughs) uh johnny's one-liners to the kids he sees one kid's shirt and he's like cool shirt 
And the guy goes, really? He's like, no, it sucks. <laughs> I love him. It's like, those are children, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, he, no, he had no filter whatsoever. No mercy. Him and his course banquets. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, God. definitely. Oh, my God. Yes. I'm like, Coors has to be a sponsor on this show. Oh, he drinks so something, many. Something, yeah. I don't think I've ever had a Coors banquet beer, but now I feel like I have to. I just need to know <laughs> what it tastes like. Right. Probably yeah. not very good, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I doubt it. For sure. <laughs> Haley, what would you say was your favorite part of the show? Uh, so two stick out in my head. One is in season two when... Johnny puts all the kids in the cement mixer to oh, train. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think I like that because one, it showed uh the the conflict Johnny was going through trying to impress Crease coming mm-hmm. back into the dojo. And um, but it also showed how much he cared about the kids. Like he had instant regret, but he also was like, I really I'm trying to help them and he gives them kind of the speech at the end where he's like, you know, like how proud I am of you guys. And, yeah. um, so I think that scene really represented like the, the conflict in mm-hmm. Johnny's character. And then the other one is, um, in the brawl at the, the season two finale when PW Hauser's character Stingray comes in and oh my oh, God. he just comes Stingray. out of nowhere he- and just starts wailing on the kids like that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he's the unsung hero of season two, and uh, yes. that yeah, I I die laughing every time. And when he pops out of the leaves and gets yeah. uh, gets uh, Miguel's headband, Stingray. so good. Yeah. Oh, and another one from that brawl was Hawk. I think Hawk was just having a field day, like. The minute he saw like the yes. first punch like land, he was like, "Oh, it's on!" and he just started going like crazy, like. And he's another kid, like, he was probably one of my, well, he, I want to say he's, like, number one, but he's definitely one of my favorite characters because, like, when you look at all of them and you see, like, how they started, they started out as straight nerds and, like, lames and then no one really know them. And then they all grew up to get that confidence and just, you know, feel good about themselves. But some obviously took it to the head. And Hawk was definitely one of them that took it to the head. But he's still one of my favorite characters, though. Dude, so. Hawk is a sociopath. Yeah, for real. <laughs> oh <though>. my god! <laughs> like, I liked him in the beginning too, and like, I'm I'm interested to see if like he can be like absolutely redeemed next season, in season four. But they got to keep him. Yeah, and one thing that uh, cracked me up about Hawk uh, real fast is that he gets that freaking tattoo right, and yeah. in the beginning it has a blue mohawk on the hawk to mm-hmm. match him, and then when he dyes his mohawk red. He changes the the mohawk and the bird to be red. He did. Like every time this guy dyes his freaking hair, is he gonna go get the mohawk changed? Because as a person with lots of tattoos, that's not how tattoo ink works. <laughs> you can't just like color over the red. Like, oh, I'm gonna have a yellow mohawk. Let's just fill it in with yellow now. It's not like a erasable coloring book. I don't know. That just you gotta wonder me. about the symbolism of the color, though, because like not to be all Star Wars again, but like we know the blue lightsaber uh, is the Jedi, right? And the red yes. lightsaber is the Sith. And Hawk, when he dyed his hair red, it was like he was fully committed to the the, dark the darker side. path, yeah, the mm-hmm. dark side. So yes. who knows? Maybe, maybe in the when he does get redeemed, maybe he'll end up with a green or purple or something. I would you could, absolutely love a green mohawk. I guess if you put the green ink on top of the red ink on his tattoo, like a muddy brown mohawk tattoo, but <laughs> that's fine. He's not taking off his shirt in front of his family of adults for a while anyway, right? <laughs> what were your favorite parts, Nicole? Um, I like the one, I think it's season one. Like I said, I watched it in literally two days, so the seasons are kind of just all mushed together right now in my head. <laughs> but I think it's season one because it's a scene with Kyler, and it's when Miguel beats the crap out of him in the cafeteria. Oh, yeah. That oh, one. yes. Because yeah. like, I feel like that's just like the start of Cobra Kai yes. and that whole stuff. So that's probably one of my favorites. And then also my other favorite is um, when – Aisha, Aisha, that's how you say her name, right? Aisha, Aisha, Aisha. Aisha, Aisha. yes, thank you. Um, when her, when she's like, guys, I have an idea, and they throw the party. Yes. Before, um, what's her name? Moon Yasmin. and Yasmin? Yasmin. I cannot 
Yes, Yasmin, thank you. Before they get there, and then Yasmin's like, what the heck? This is supposed to be my party. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, sorry, we got here first. I'm like, yes, you show that power. I loved that. And I agree with, like, the... um when Miguel was in the uh, cafeteria and like was able to finally defend himself. Mm -hmm. And I really liked season one, Miguel just kind of coming into his own and then finally being able to like kick ass in the end. Well, I shouldn't say finally, it all seemed to happen pretty quickly, but (laughs) (laughs) this kid's really good at karate. Oh my God. Um, And I got a little nervous for Miguel in season two. And I mean, they kind of hinted towards it at the end of season one when, you know, he shows no mercy to Robbie and hits him in the shoulder. Mm-hmm. But I was like, no, my pure sweet boy Miguel can't, you know, mm-hmm. I, I really didn't want him to become like a big jerk. And, you know, you could kind of see the hints of that going down. So, um, I mean, he was literally kicked on his ass and <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, when he was kicked over the railing and, you know, and he did show mercy at that point. So I'm, I'm glad that we get to see soft Miguel because... Yeah, I love soft boy Miguel. <laughs> like, I think one thing we can say, though, from Miguel character is that he never pretty much changed who he was. He was still the same kid. Yeah. He was just way mm-hmm. more confident compared to the rest of the guys who, you know, took that class. They kind of uh, had a, a major ego boost. Yeah. And with, and with Miguel, he had a lot of regrets with a lot of things. And it was just a learning point for him mm-hmm. to see that. Not everything that you do right will always end up in a a positive way. And obviously, you see he ended up being in a coma for doing it. But, uh, yeah, he he's definitely was probably one of the fans favorites for sure. So Mm -hmm. that's a good point. He was always still himself. And like Mm -hmm. you said, like some of the other Cobra Kai members, just 180 and just became kind of monsters. But like Miguel, like even though he struggled and like. Had and I mean, I, they mentioned that at one point, like, you know, the writing on the wall was in black and white, but like Cobra Kai exists in the gray. So I feel like that's really a lot of the characters on the show are just kind of mm-hmm. no one is. Well, maybe a few people. <laughs> but most, <laughs> most people are, you know, just evil or good. Like everybody's yep. nuanced. And I like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, especially uh, coming off of watching. I just went back and watched the original Karate Kid movie and you know, coming out of that, it's it's so clear early on. Daniel's the good guy. You know, Cobra Kai, they're all the bad evil yeah. ones. And it's really, it is really, really black and white. And so I love mm-hmm. that they decided to go this more nuanced route. And, and I don't know if any of you guys watched How I Met Your Mother. Yes. Um, but Barney... Uh, back <laughs> in in one of the early seasons, he talks about how Billy Zabka is one of his heroes, yeah. and how Johnny Lawrence was always the good guy in Karate Kid, and everybody had it wrong. Yeah, and uh, I think Billy Zabka even guest stars on the show at one point. <laughs> yeah. And so I loved when Cobra Kai started. I was like, dude, Barney Stinson's freaking out right now. Wherever he is, he feels completely vindicated. <laughs> I because am not the beginning, Ralph Macchio. <laughs> yeah, the beginning of the show totally takes that angle that yeah. Johnny was misunderstood and Johnny had a much harder life than anybody realized. And Crease was abusive to him. And, and uh, it really paints him out to be such, you know, way more complex than we ever got in Karate Kid. And I love that in seasons two and in season three we get to see more of that we see tori has her own issues and backstory we see now in season three we get to learn about crease's backstory Mm -hmm. and you know who who made him you know the way he is and and yeah so i love that i love that it exists in the gray and i love that it shows you know everyone has reasons for their behavior and uh and not everyone's gonna see it the same way you know sam i think in in season three the beginning of season three she's like everybody has a hard life it doesn't give you an excuse to be a bully yeah but you also see on miguel's face when he's like yeah you don't really get it like (laughs) you haven't had a hard life so you don't really understand you know so i I love that i love how nuanced it is and how you can go back and forth in a single episode Mm -hmm. you know rooting for for daniel or rooting for johnny and and rooting for robbie and rooting for miguel absolutely yeah i mean they johnny and daniel can both be jerks and they can both be really good guys and i yeah i love that i mean we all agree that like crease is a a hole, but like, yeah, it, it kind of shows like how he got to be the a hole that he is today. <laughs> Very traditional, I might say. Very yeah. traditional. Yeah, and something funny about Crease that like it's like watching the show though is 
what is this guy's in game? Like, what does he want? Does he want to own a karate dojo? Or does he just kind of want to like relive his badass days? Like, I, what is his end goal here? I don't know. Command a bunch of evil children. Well, he faked his, he faked his death like twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's commanding an army of evil children, I get that because that's one of my goals before I turn 40. So, I mean, (laughs) who among us? Well, well, take notes from him because he he's definitely doing it right now. So <laughs> he reminds me of Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. Oh my like, god, yes! How much you want to bet I can throw this this football over the mountains? Like how much you want to bet I can get these kids <laughs> back to All Valley and and you know be the reigning? I, I think he just I do think he he has to justify his life somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in order for Kreese's life to be valid and his decisions to be valid, then people have to suck. Everyone has to be bad. He mm-hmm. has to, you know, because his whole mantra is, is life shows no mercy. And so we don't either. Yeah. And so I think he's back to just try to prove like I was right all along, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, clearly he's not. And his <laughs> but but it's interesting because I almost see a shadow of crease in Hawk. Like if yeah, Hawk definitely. doesn't change his ways, he's going down the exact same path that, that crease has gone down. And and I don't mean to cut you mm-hmm. off, but you can kind of tell throughout the movie that, um, Johnny takes Mickey under his wing. And then as he, as we get deeper within, um, Kreese takes Hawks under, under his wing. And you can just tell like, who's, who's like, as far as building relationships, because in season three, when, um, Johnny comes back into doing what he's doing karate wise. He wanted to get his, he wanted to get his kids back. Yeah. And then, you know, they all meet up at the park and, you know, Hawk said, yo, I'm a Cobra Kai for life. And then that's when Kreese comes in, come behind the scenes. So you kind of can tell like who's who. And, and you kind of just like, you kind of have like an idea of where this is going. So, and I also wanted to add in there that there was a lot of miscommunication. You know, within the kids, especially. Oh my like, god! This whole show's tagline yeah, it, just needs to be communicate, people. It was. <laughs> it was. It's, you got for one. You got the. Uh, we could. We could go back to. I think it was. See, was it season one or was it season two when they were at the uh, beach, and Miguel did not hear from Sam all day because she was on punishment. Yes, you know, just Robbie, communicate. Yeah, Robbie sprained his ankle, needed to ride home, but he really faked it so she yeah. didn't get out of the house. And then, you know, Mickey get drunk and he, you know, has no idea. Then he accidentally hit her. Or we can even take it back to season two finale high school brawl when really Robbie was really trying to break up the fight. Miguel got there a little late to the party. And yeah. all he sees is a guy with his hand on his girl and he instantly, they just go at it. So it's just a, a lot of a lot of miscommunication throughout Dude, this. There's so many points where like Daniel shows up to talk to Johnny and is like, I just came here to talk to you about something. But you know what? Never mind. I'm just going to leave. And I'm like, no, 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 stay. Talk yes. about, tell him why you drove in your car to go see him. Like, exactly. No, screw you, man. You're never going to change. Daniel, like, that needs to be his tagline is, you know what? I thought I could do this, but you're never going to change. He does that with Robbie like three mm-hmm. times. Yeah. And I'm like, God, man, just make up your freaking mind. Uh, That's how you construct plot, though, right? Like, they have to create conflict out of nothing. Yes. Right? Absolutely. But, I think um I think uh one of the the funny things about Daniel in particular is that he has never had to be like back on his heels as the bad guy. Yeah. And he's never, you know, he's always just been the hero mm-hmm. in his family and in the community and everything. And so yeah. it's it's interesting to see his growth and also like how the good guy role or or whatever the the good guy that he's trying to play can yeah. backfire on him as we saw mm-hmm. it, you know it did with with Robbie so that's been that's been cool to see too that's a really good point yeah and like yeah. when he goes to the uh, city council meeting which is apparently all the rage in town uh <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, everyone's like getting up and like yelling at him. He's never been in that position because in this town, he's a, a hero and an icon because everybody in this freaking town is obsessed with karate and remembers his 1984 crane kick. 
God. I love that so much. And I love, I love that they're self-aware. Like they know though, they like the show recognizes that like the first episode of season three, they have those fake interviews and the, yeah, the one mom, like, the one mom's like, we have enough to worry about without having to deal with karate gangs in our high school. Yes. <laughs> Well, this is like super random and I just thought of it like while we were talking about Johnny Lawrence, but it was um, season three when Robbie steals the minivan from the LaRusso mm-hmm. um, car dealership. Yeah. And then literally in like the finale of season three, um, well, not the finale, but more so in that same episode, kind of um, Johnny takes the minivan and drives off to go find Robbie by himself without Daniel. And then Aww. Daniel's like, I want that minivan back at my auto shop. And then like at the season finale, Johnny is still driving the minivan. He's <laughs> never going to get that minivan yeah. back. And I just noticed it at his like apartment when he parks his car. And I just, I don't know why I just died laughing. So I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Dude, Johnny tries to pawn the minivan at one point. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. I don't even know. And then what else? I don't know. I was laughing actually at a lot of scenes. I just thought it was really funny how they did some of the things. And then honestly, the karate sometimes I'm like, okay, this is so like when they're at the LaRusso house, I don't know if this is the like end of season three, like the finale and they're at the LaRusso house. It's Cobra Kai versus um, Eagle Fang and um, the, oh my God, Miyagi Do. Um, they're all at the LaRusso house and all the kids are just fighting. And I'm like, this would never actually happen in real life. Like 20, 30 kids at one house just fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Same. But that was really funny too. Just some of like the actual karate moves. It's like, okay, this is not real, but. Oh yeah. I don't know. To- I'm totally with you there. All right. So I have a question. Which character you dislike the most? It could be one or it could be multiple. I know for me, there's a few. That mm-hmm. I was starting to dislike, and then they started to rub off on me for a little bit for the yeah. good. But I'll let you ladies take it on this one. I honestly think that Hawk is my least favorite character because he's just such a jerk. And, like, yeah. I get that he <laughs> – I don't know. He's just so mean to Dimitri, and I'm always just mm-hmm. like, that's your bro, man. I don't know, right? Oh, ah, yeah. it makes me so mad. Um, And I will say that I, in season one and two, really liked Robbie – um, mm-hmm. and I even like when, uh, Sam and Robbie were starting to flirt, I was like, yes, I love this. But like <laughs> season three, I don't know, Robbie, like uh, he's, I, uh, I don't like him as much as I used to. Like, I get that, you know, what's going on and he's, he's God, he, I feel so freaking bad for him. Like this guy's had mm-hmm. like the just toughest life for a teenage boy, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. He's not quite my, one of my favorites anymore. What about you guys? Um, mine would be obviously Crease. I think that's yeah. just a given for everyone. Yeah. And then I also don't like Kyler. He's just starting to like trying to start drama when it's really not necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was just a big bully that I didn't like. And I would also agree about Hawk too, but. Okay. Yeah. Haley, so you? Yeah, I always look at shows with teenagers through the lens of like being a teacher. Like mm-hmm. if I had these kids in my classroom, uh, who would I, <laughs> who would I despise the most? Um, so honestly, I got to go with Dimitri is one of my least favorite characters. Ooh, okay. He is like, like I get that he's the nice kid and he's the innocent one and whatever, but like he is so incredibly annoying like with the whole (laughs) know-it-all like i'm gonna come in and be like i know you guys are in karate now but let's play dungeons and dragons or i'm like go away (laughs) go away dude Um, and like it's messed up that crease like punched him in the face and he should probably be in jail for you know assaulting a child but for sure (laughs) When he Definitely. walks in there and starts just like <laughs> mouthing off to Crease and is like, I love personal space, and then grabs Crease's arm. Yeah. I was like, this kid's about to get laid the <laughs> F out. So I yeah, get he why he hit him, but he probably shouldn't have hit him. Definitely shouldn't have hit <laughs> he, him. He definitely like doesn't know when to shut up. Dimitri yeah. doesn't. Mm-hmm. And uh and then I would also say Robbie is one of my least favorite characters. I think I I didn't like how I felt like Robbie was got into Miyagi Do specifically to like piss off his dad yeah um and and i you know obviously johnny hasn't been a good dad but 
You want to talk about miscommunication, man. Oh Robbie and Johnny, God. like, <laughs> I swear, every time one of them tries to reach out, the mm-hmm. other one does, you know, acts like a douchebag. I don't know. But, but yeah, Robbie, I, I'm hoping for some sort of redemption with him. Yeah. Um, but he, he definitely, you know, it's hard because the show from the gate makes you cheer for Johnny and, yeah. and, and makes you come into the story seeing things through his perspective. And so I felt the pain that Johnny felt when Robbie turns his back on him. And yeah, that's when, right. You know, so so I think that's that's why I was soured on Robbie as a character. I think that the communication between Robbie and Johnny, um, I'm sorry, yeah, Robbie and Johnny would probably improve if Johnny had a freaking cell phone again. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God, man. This guy doesn't know how to freaking work his cell phone or <laughs> yet alone get on Facebook. He didn't know how to plug in his computer. Uh, My yeah, God, right. man. Send it to the internet. For right. real, though. Yeah. Yeah. I love when he first gets the internet. He like goes and Googles hot babes. <laughs> first thing. First thing. Hot babes. Ooh. So wonderful. <laughs> oh, man. Um, For me... Well, for one, you know, I, I have to agree with Nicole. You know, Crease was definitely by far, like, number one on my list. Mm-hmm. And then there was a there were a few that, you know, I was I kind of didn't like their character, but it kind of, you know, rubbed off on me. Uh, one in particular, um, I will have to say um, Sam Little Love Triangle, because honestly, yeah. if she would have just, you know what I mean? Just I get it that Miguel was drunk, you know what I mean? So I'm looking at it from both sides. But if she would have just came right out the gate, like like at least um, once they got to the beach, at least like, yo, yo, let me like, like let me explain like. What was the reason yes. behind it? You know, she come down holding his hand. Like, no, you about to bump into this guy. He yeah, why was she holding Robbie's day. hand, like, and coming down the hill, come, man? You know, like, little stuff like that. Like, just common sense. But they're teenagers, yeah. so you got to look at it from their perspective. They don't uh, have that yet. <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I mean? And Dimitri, you know, he was definitely annoying a lot throughout the, sh- uh, throughout the show. I mean, he even took credit. You know, saying he was part of Cobra Kai when the girls came to him at the beach. (laughs) And he never fought a day in his life. So, uh, but he he started to grow on me, you know, just because I believe in, uh, I think it was season two, when he started seeing him build a little confidence. He even got to hook up with Yasmin in season three. So, you know, it it was, um, he started to grow on me. And of course, Robbie. I like Robbie because I understand, you know, where he's coming from. He had a tough life. And, you know, he... And, and it kind of, it made sense that he was going to start crushing on Sam. It, 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 yeah. it was totally predictable at that point. But then it was like a couple scenes where I was kind of pissed off because you notice Miguel comes to the house, drops off the Medal of Honor, and yeah. he said, tell Sam that I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And then he lies. He lies about it. Put the medal in the backyard as if like it was never missing. You know what yep. I mean? So eventually, you know, the truth going to come out. So, but yeah. So. Yeah. On the flip side of that, who are some of your favorite characters, especially when it comes to, I mean, you know, the main characters you can say too, but like kind of those mm-hmm. unsung heroes of the show. Because mm-hmm. I definitely have a favorite character who is, I don't know, kind of a side side person. But For what sure. about you guys? Like the little short nerdy kid with the glasses. <laughs> like, oh, he was they're so both cute. so cute. Yes, the one, he the one who didn't want to feed them. the mouse. <laughs> yeah. I think yes. his name's Bert. <laughs> Okay. And yeah, I would say him, like not being a main character, he was probably one of my favorites. He's so cute and so innocent. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he just starts fighting and I'm like, yes. They had but their nerd him. scene in the season finale. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. They're both so tiny. Oh, I know. So I'd have to say them too. Both of them actually. Yeah. My favorite character is Moon. I love mm. her. Mm-hmm. I love how she starts out with like the popular girls and then she, I mean, just like i'm not gonna be with you guys you guys are bullies and then she he's so (laughs) hot to hawk but then he's a bully too and she gets a hot girlfriend and is a sex positive (laughs) feminist and i love her (laughs) um and i also really like aisha and i was sad that she didn't come back for season three um, and I thought she was kind of unceremoniously removed from the show. I, I don't know. I hope that she yeah. comes back at some point, too, like Yasmin did, especially because she's, I, I mean, one of the few like women of color on the entire show. Exactly. And then mm-hmm. they just 
get rid of her. I don't know. I thought she was, I, I felt for her in, in season one and she's bullied and then she becomes a badass and she truly mm-hmm. wants to still be friends with Sam, but she's, you know, kind of caught in the middle. So shout out to Aisha. I hope she comes yeah. back for season four after she comes back from private school or whatever the hell. I was yeah. so pissed off about that. Yeah, that sucks. Mm-hmm. All right, Haley, it's on you. Um, I mean, all right. Real talk, my absolute favorite character is Johnny. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, uh, kind of more side character. I really like um, uh, the Louis, Louis LaRusso, mm-hmm. who works at the car dealership. Oh, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Oh, yeah, Louis, the goofy yeah, one. Yeah, he got his, he got, he got his uh, butt kicked early on. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's like kind of small side story comic the relief. Goomba. Uh yeah, I like him. He um he's pretty funny and I think uh the other guy Anoush who also mm-hmm. works with them. Mm-hmm. I, I I like them because I think they they provide a little bit of a uh a human touch to the LaRusso uh automotive group. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I agree. I think so too. Um, and I guess I just want to touch on like some of like the weird and things about the show that we all just kind of accept as things that are, okay, yep, this is just happening now. And something that I kept looking at my husband and saying throughout the show is, my God, they drive drunk so much in this show. (laughs) So much. Oh my God. And no one ever like faces any consequences for it. Like even after they, the, uh, Lord, or Johnny and Carmen and the LaRussos go out for dinner and they show them like getting drunk and dancing and having a great time. Then the valet pulls up his car and they're like, <laughs> bye! They're like, Dude, call yeah. a freaking Uber, man. I was definitely thinking that. I was like, is he still going to give him his keys after all <laughs> yeah. those drinks they had? Like, it's like maybe yeah. you shouldn't be driving, bro. But I think there's Johnny's tagline. Maybe you shouldn't be driving, bro. <laughs> John- <laughs> Johnny's God. so used to it. Yeah, Johnny's oh so God. used to it. It's like he's immune to it, so like it wouldn't bother him at all. Right, so, drunk driving's just like playing a like a driving video game for him. He's just dodging moving definitely. targets in the road. Definitely. Jeez. So my favorite of all was definitely Miguel. Oh, I love Miguel. Yeah, another character. Well, it's probably two. Chris. I was a big fan of Chris because you notice in throughout the the show, him and his friend they kind of turned against each other when Chris decided to join Daniel. Daniel side of the uh, side of the team, yeah. And I would have to say um, Daniel's son. I don't. I forgot his name, but he was the youngest, the baby boy that always played the video games and always Anthony. Eats, I think his name. Yes, is. and eats all the food. He's so Dan- demanding. <laughs> yes, like and Daniel was so tough on Sam, <laughs> making sure she be active and you know all her boy crush. Yeah. But I'm like, dude, you have a little, you have another little one that does not want to leave the video <laughs> game and said, dad, I'm about to order the most expensive thing off Amazon. Yes. So, that yeah. kid's like, mother, mother, may I have some French toast? <laughs> Just like, like, oh my God. God. I'm like, my goodness, little child. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. No, I forgot about him. He's funny too. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What like relationships I know these are all children, so it's kind of weird. But, like, who do you guys ship on the show? I guess there's some adult romance, too. But who do you guys want to end up together? Who's in game for you? Mm. Okay. I really like Johnny and Carmen together. Yes. But I'm also really liking Johnny and Allie together because she came back and their connection and, Mm -hmm. like, chemistry is just great like you could tell that they really do love each other yeah so i really like them together but i know it would be hard because she obviously doesn't live in the valley but yeah i but i think i like uh johnny and carmen the best and then i i do like sam and miguel i don't like sam and robbie i think robbie's too much of a bad boy and sam is kind of like a goody two not a goody two shoes but she's more on, on the innocent side yeah so i don't like them together i also do like um moon and uh hawk do you I do. Aww. I thought they were cute. They were cute when they were yeah. all before Hawk was like full evil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He went loco. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I like Sam and Miguel. I did. Um, I did definitely ship Sam and Robbie for like a hot second there when Miguel was kind of getting a little 
I don't know, bad boy Miguel. And then I agree, Carmen and mm-hmm. Johnny are cute together. So. Yeah. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> yeah. All right, Haley, it's on you. Um, I, I'd say Johnny and Carmen. As much as I want Johnny and Allie to get together, because mm-hmm. that would be like, you know, this great coming full circle, like right. ultimate redemption for Johnny. I still think it's just more realistic that he would end up with Carmen. And uh, yeah, so I ship them. And then um, Sam, Sam and Miguel. Um, or you know what? To be honest, like them all just staying single. All the kids, mm. that'd be cool too, <laughs> because sure. they're young and they have a lot to learn. So you know what? Yes. We ship um Miguel and maturity. We ship yes. Sam and happiness yeah. and safety. Sam and some some humility and, and Tori and some common sense. All we ship everybody great, yeah. with good decision making skills. <laughs> definitely, yes. definitely. Um I will probably have to say well, for one, I was very shocked with the Johnny and Carmen. I mean, although he did have a dream about her. <laughs> that dream know, that, sequence was so funny. Funny. It's so yeah. 80s. So weird. He's it so stuck in the 80s. I love it. So, so weird. But <laughs> I mean, they, they definitely make a nice couple. Then him and Allie, you know, that was someone he always thought about at the back in the back of his mind. You know, the he one was that asking, got away. The one that mm-hmm. got away. That's what we call her. <laughs> and uh of course, Miguel and Miguel and Sam. I, I definitely like that couple. I was I'm not a I wasn't too against her and Robbie, but I just didn't like how it played out. Yeah. Because yeah. it was so predictable. Because honestly, although she was with him, she still wasn't really over Miguel because you saw the kiss scene mm-hmm. in season two. So Robbie was um, convenient. Exactly. You know and he had I mean? a six pack. So, I mean, <laughs> come on. Yeah. That's really what that's what really got her. The six pack at the uh, <laughs> the clubhouse. Right. I believe. Yes. When Aisha asked her that question. Like, mm-hmm. Are you? Yeah. So. That kind of I mean, gave it away. Which among us has never rebounded with a convenient guy with a six pack? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I'm gonna let y'all have that. But yeah, it, it, those two are definitely by far my favorite. And yeah, I do. I will say this though: the Tory and Miguel. I didn't like too much because. Oh yeah, we really talked about Tory. Yeah, well, you yeah. notice. In season two, I think it was season two, if I'm not mistaken, he showed her the video Mm -hmm. that he really wanted to show to Sam because he was very bummed out about it. And because her and Sam had that little conflict, you know, it kind of backfired because she used like, oh, no, this is stupid. You shouldn't do it. Don't be desperate. She swooped in. Yeah, and she really mm-hmm. did it. So she really did it for her own good, and then it backfired on her. And now she hates Sam's guts because of it. Yeah, but I'm like, you kind of did it to yourself. Dude, so. Tori and Hawk need to be together. They could be like Sid and Nancy and just be yeah. crazy I, and rare together. <laughs> I thought that was going to happen, though. Not going to lie, I was kind of expecting Tori and Hawk to get together for some odd reason. Ugh, because they're both sociopaths. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we, I mean, we could go on and on. There's just so much about the show that like I would love to talk about, and but we do have to wrap it up. But I, I want like, let's keep talking about it in the pop culture junkie support group and make sure that we can all, I don't know, like everybody who's listening, we want to know your favorite parts of Cobra Kai. What parts were funny? What are some things that like wouldn't really happen in the real world that we all just accept as fact in this valley mm-hmm. of karate? <laughs> Definitely. Um, but we, I mean, we want to thank Haley so much for joining us today. Like, mm-hmm. I loved having you. I know we all loved having you here. So um, tell the people where they can find you, Haley. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was awesome. Um, let's let's do it again. Um, yeah. For if, if anybody wants to check out my podcast, it's called 30 Nerdy and Thriving. You can find it pretty much on any podcast platform, any streaming platform, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, Google Podcasts, et cetera. Uh, And I've got lots of cool stuff lined up for January, some cool interviews, and uh, I'm really big into cosplay. So any cosplayers out there who want to link up, you can find me on on Instagram at 30 Nerdy Thriving. Uh, I've got a Facebook page and Twitter at 30 Nerdy Pod. So check me out there. Oh man, I I miss cosplaying so much. Uh, I I have like so many ideas in my head once we can all finally get back to cons. So yes, uh, yeah. I here's hoping that. 2021 brings us uh, 
movies in theaters and conventions in real life instead of on the internet. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Nicole, where can the people find you? You could find me at um, N A Eldridge fourteen on Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Monte. If you could follow me on Instagram underscore M Harris five. Um, also follow me on Facebook, no Monte Harris. I also have my own podcast out. Uh, what does it take? Feel free to check it out. Uh, but other than that, yeah, that's that's all I have for you. Awesome. And you can find me, Shauna, at Shauna Trinidad, S-H-A-U-N-A-T-R-I-N-I-D-A-D on Instagram and at Shauna Trinidad on Twitter. And everybody, please follow the Pop Culture Junkie podcast on Instagram, um, on Twitter, on Facebook. Join the Pop Culture Junkie support group on Facebook. Um, you get the chance to talk with Nicole, Monte, and myself. And Haley will be jumping in there sometimes, I'm sure. I, I just volunteering you to jump in there I'm in. <laughs> um and yeah just i mean tell us what you want to hear about in the podcast if we totally got something wrong then let us know and please download and listen to the pop culture junkie podcast um we are available everywhere that you can listen to podcasts so and we still do want to do the junkies choice awards where we're going to have like a little awards show here and uh thank you all so much to everybody who got some really cute and funny ideas going in the support page about like different awards a quote awards we can give out <laughs> awesome well thank you all so much and uh, thank you again Haley for <laughs> hanging out and chatting about Cobra Kai and everybody please like follow subscribe download all that good stuff take care guys bye 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 Pop Culture Junkie is a production of Pop Culture Entertainment Group all rights reserved